Ah, here we are again for Open Home, Open Bible. What an excitement it is to come to the Scriptures as you're doing it together, probably, unless you're there on your own in some place. But I'm Richard Bewes, speaking to you from All Souls Church in Langham Place, London, England, and I'm accompanied here by Johnny Erickson Tada, who's over here from the United States, and Dr. Paul Blackham, who's from England and working with us here in London. Now, our theme today is going to be the Bible and its application. So why don't we look at, I think, the classic place really is 2 Timothy chapter 3, and I get to start at verse 14. Here is Paul writing, But as for you, continue in what you have learned and have become convinced of, because you know those from whom you learned it, and how from infancy you have known the holy scriptures which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith in Christ Jesus. All scripture is God-breathed and is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness, so that the man of God may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. Great passage. Johnny Erickson Tada, I think I'm going to start with you, because you've uh, made the study of the uh, Bible really a lifetime's work. Mm. In fact, my wife, Liz, when she read one of your books, she said to me, Johnny is obviously a great theologian. Oh, dear. <laughs> <laughs> Let's well, just think about this with the Bible, because um, I mean, some people might think, okay, then in that case it's a thing entirely for the eggheads, for the intellectuals only. How do you react to that? Is it an intellectual exercise? Well, if it becomes an intellectual exercise, be sure your faith will become dry and shriveled very quickly. Uh, if any of us take a, a, a dry intellectual approach to the Word of God, studying it mechanistically or... Uh, technically, as though we want to rack up brownie points with God for um, our knowledge of His Word or memorize Scripture just for the sake of being able to spout off a chapter from the book of James, then nothing kills the faith quicker. Because the portion of Scripture you just read, Richard, um, underscores the purpose of Scripture. That is to make us wise unto salvation in Christ Jesus. The whole point is that we might know Jesus better. not that we might know uh, why he allowed awful things to happen or, or how come I'm not, uh, you know, doing this particular vocation or why didn't he open that particular door for me over there or why must I be stuck in this corner, my lot in life, um, struggling, striving. It, no, we must never distance uh, the Bible's answers from, from the God of the Bible. Uh, I, I'm thinking particularly of something I saw in an Indiana church recently. I wheeled into the narthex of this big church and right there, right there against the brick wall was this huge tapestry with gold embroidered lettering which simply said, enjoy him. And, and that should be our, our, our focus in scripture, to get to know God, to, to get the, to know the, the God of the Bible and to enjoy him. That's wonderful. That's wonderful. Give us a scripture, Paul, another, another scripture that helps us with this. Well, I always like that one in 1 Corinthians 2 from verse 14, where it just says, The man without the Spirit does not accept the things that come from the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness to him, and he cannot understand them because they are spiritually discerned. Um, and I like that because Paul's like reminding us that this isn't, just about, oh, well, you know, if you've got a very high IQ and you spent years at it, then you'll understand these things. He's like saying, no, some of the brightest people in the world who don't believe can't understand can't, even the most are. basic things in the Bible. But on the other hand, you can just have a very simple believer who's had no years of training or anything, but they come to back and they pray. They say, Lord, show me what you have said in this word. And they all have incredibly deep insights into mm. this, which are hidden. I like that when Jesus says, thank you, Father, that you have hidden these things from those who are wise, those who trust in their own intellectual abilities and skills, but you have instead revealed it to children or people who just approach it with such insipidity. I like his end point, because this pleases you. I like the fact that Jesus says, this yeah. pleases you, that God yeah. gets, gets enjoyment out of doing that, showing all his great truths to whoever just comes in simple faith and humility and, you know, in, in hiding it from those who, who won't come in faith and humility. 
You know, this reminds me when I was first delving into God's Word to find answers for my own situation, why God might allow this to happen to me. I realized that my question why wasn't, wasn't begging for answers. I wasn't looking for answers so much as fatherly assurance that somehow everything was going to be okay. And I discovered that, um, that God doesn't give answers so readily as much as He gives Himself in, in His Word. Uh, I was kind of like a, a little child looking up to the face of, of her daddy saying, why, daddy, why? And it would have been very rude for a father to look down at me, a child, and say, well, now the reason that uh, you broke your neck is because you, you entered the water at an odd angle and thereby the trajectory of your die, blah, blah, blah. I didn't want that. I just wanted God to pick me up and pat me on the back just like a daddy and say everything would be okay. And so then, with those eyes, with that perspective, when I looked at his word, I saw that in Psalm 18, he doesn't give answers. He gives himself as the rock and the fortress. In Psalm 10, he gives himself as the father to the orphan. In uh, Isaiah 9, he gives himself as the, I don't know, the wonderful counselor to the depressed. It, it, in John 4, is the living water to the thirsty. I mean, time and again, he doesn't give us answers in, in his word, although answers when we find them, good, right, and true as though they are, help in the journey of our faith. Mm. But primarily he gives himself, wouldn't mm. you think? Mm. Mm. Uh, Johnny, millions of us uh, would want to congratulate you on taking yourself to school as you've done in your study and application of the scriptures in your own life. I think it's a very wonderful thing. I think what you've just pointed out to us, again, is that, you know, there are plenty of people who are illiterates, who are actually much better versed in the Bible than plenty of professors because they've listened to the Bible well, taken it in into their souls, worked it out. So it's very exciting that this should be so. It isn't just a thing for the intellect or for the boffins at all, but it is applied and you've done that so marvelously. Let me just pursue for a minute. I mean, how is it that a, a book written so long ago in so many different cultures and backgrounds and so forth can still be applied to us today? I mean, how does it address us personally in the 21st century no oh. it's it's good because it, you th in scripture you you often see that the lord will speak to people by name you know when he calls the prophet samuel he called him lots of times like samuel samuel so it is in the bible we learn that god deals with people personally but even more than that i love that in hebrews chapter 3 and verse 7 when the writer is quoting from the Old Testament, and he doesn't say, the Holy Spirit once said to some people long ago, he says, the Holy Spirit says right now, today, if you, whoever you are reading this, if you hear his voice, do not harden your hearts. So the scripture's like, <gasps> he's speaking to me. <laughs> That's, that is really exciting. Boy, that energizes me just to know that right now. I know. I, I, I think that, and that's the striking thing, it says right now, and that's, uh, that's the experience of it, it's a sharp two-edged sword which do, it comes at us and you, you open it, oh I'll just read a bit of the Bible, and you think oh no, whenever you open this and start to read it, you've no idea what God's going to say to you, he, he, he can dress it, comfort you, challenge you, oh, anything. It's a marvellous thing, I mean we all know of people, I can think of somebody now who came into this church here one day, our lay reader was preaching, on the tabernacle, uh, a message on, from the Old Testament on the tabernacle, and the person became a Christian there and then through the message on the tabernacle. God does speak, speaks mm. today. Mm. Mm. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet, right? Thy word is a lamp unto my feet. I love that for it tells me that God may not show all his plans and purposes. He may not show himself, uh, but one step at a time, today, as you just read from that verse in Hebrews, today, right now. That's uh, an encouragement to get into God's Word today. <laughs> yes, Psalm 119, 105, is it? That word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. You've been a Christian now, Johnny, for a number of years, and you've, uh, you know, have you learned all that the Bible has to say now? I mean, you you know, sometimes people can get, after two years into the Christian life, they say, well, it's getting a bit old hat now, you know. Sort of oh. Do you ever feel that? Oh. This happened to me just a couple of weeks ago. I was reading in 2 Corinthians chapter 1. I have read verses 8 and 9 many, 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 many times. <laughs> and suddenly I read it with a 
whole new understanding where, and I, I don't have it right in front of me, but Paul is in Asia. And he says in, in verses 8 and 9, 2 Corinthians chapter 1, something to the effect that we, where is it? We, here it is. We were under great pressure, far beyond our ability to endure, so that we in, despaired even of life. Indeed, in our hearts, we felt the sentence of death. Hold that thought. Because I was going through one of these things where you think, oh, Lord, I just can't go through this. I have no endurance for this. I'd rather die than go through this, you know, the sentence of death on your heart. But this happened that we might not rely on ourselves, but on God who raises the dead. And here, these writings of Paul in Asia, we would never think of an apostle thinking to himself, oh, I just can't, I can't make, I can't do this. I cannot do this, God, no way. But he did. And it spoke to me so powerfully as I was going through my own, oh, I can't face this. I have no strength for this, no resources for this. But then that ninth verse comes in. This happens so that we might not rely on ourselves, but on God. And it spoke to me in a whole new, fresh way. Always there's something new when it concerns the Word of God. I think that there are some people who might come to church or engage in a Bible study simply for the gathering of information. That's why they come, you know, and they come out saying, it was a good word, a good study, and they've gathered a bit more information. Now, it has to be a bit more than that, doesn't oh, it? My goodness, yes. And, and I think you just, you just describe so many of us, and, and we all at one time or another, um, gather information like dust, like wool, uh, like moss on a rock. It is static, it is inert, it is dead, it is dry, it is mechanistic, technical, as I said earlier. And nothing kills faith quicker. I think that's why every time we listen to the preaching of God's Word on a Sunday morning or we enter a Bible study such as we are doing now, we have to come asking the Lord Jesus to open our eyes that we may see visions of truth thou hast for me uh, and, and enjoy Him and embrace Him, the Lord of the Scriptures. There's something about that in James, isn't there? In, Jane, um, in James 1.22, it's, it's an amazing verse. He says, do not merely listen to the word and so deceive yourselves, do what it says. It's interesting, isn't it? He doesn't say it's not just that you will only get, you know, you'll just improve your mind if you merely listen. He says, no, you're not even helping yourself at all if you're refusing to do what it says. You're actually deceiving yourself. You're actually putting yourself in a worse position if you, ref if you won't uh, do what it says and get drawn into what it says. You know, and then he talks about you like someone who sees himself in the mirror, turns away and can't remember what they look like. You just, you know, and I think it's a, such a penetrating word. If we really want to understand it, we have to be involved in what it's telling us and putting it into practice. And sometimes that can be a little unsettling if mm. what God is telling us to do is not merely feed uh, the homeless or give mm. blankets to the poor, but to clean up that sinful habit ah, yeah. or to put away that, that wicked fantasy mm -hmm. or to say no to the ungodliness in this world. Um, those are the things we have to, quote, do that James, I think, talks mm -hmm. about here that can be a little unsettling. Mm -hmm. But once we do them, yeah. then we experience that power we talked about before. Very good. The Bible, the Bible, the Bible. One book. Um, it was John Wesley who said, uh, talked, had a long prayer which ended up by saying, may I be a homo unius libri, the man of one book. And Paul Blackham here, I mean, you've got 4,000 books, I know. But really, you're a man of one book in the end. <laughs> no, and just it the has one. to be that, doesn't it? One book only. Same with Johnny. Johnny uh, Erickson Tata has made uh, the Bible and its study a lifetime's thing, a lifetime's adventure. And by the way, look out for Johnny um, Erickson Tata and her ministry. In this country, there it is, Through the Roof, that's what it's called, Through the Roof. And uh, the address, if you ever would like to get in touch with the organizers here, is through the roof, P.O. Box 178, Cobham, Surrey. And I'm sure there's an American address as well, which we'll be able to get onto one day. God bless you. Johnny, thank you so much for coming, you and Ken, to join us here in Britain for a few, just a few precious hours. We're very, very grateful indeed. And we are all of us grateful for this opportunity of sharing with you.